to this tell us whether they'd like to be recorded. Uh, Linda, if you would take a roll of who would like to recuse themselves from any of the applications before us tonight. Linda? Okay. Yep. Chairperson McBride? I, I do not wish to uh, recuse myself for anything. Member Cove? So, Lisa? Lisa? No, sorry, no. Uh, Member Searle? Uh, I don't believe that I need to, although I will say that uh, the item at 31 North Main Street has uh, drawings that came out of the office where I used to work and used to own, but I have not participated in this at all. But I don't think I need to uh, um, uh, recuse. I, I would agree with that. You're not. You're not. Uh, just, you're not an owner uh, or yeah, participating I, when that uh, occurred. Okay. I just want to clarify that I no longer have an association with the business. That's all. Right. Okay. Okay. Then, Next person. Uh, Member Morrow. Ken. Ken Morrow, do you wish to That's recuse good. yourself? Ken is muted. Ken. Ken? I, I don't wish to recuse myself. Okay. Okay, and then, and then there's Member Harrington. No need to recuse. Uh, last name is fortuitous only. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to open this meeting with the first application, which is uh, 15 South Main Street, a sign and I think uh, one of the applicants is, is available to present what you'd like to do. Hi, yes, this is Rubina Duarte. Um, do you want me just to kind of like, I've never done this before. Do I just kind of talk through what, what the idea is? Yeah, just, just tell okay. us what, you, what you'd like to do, Rubina. Okay, okay, perfect. So um, we are um, planning on, we leased a place from Mike Newcomb about a month ago, beginning of October. We plan to open up a little store in 15 South Main, the building on the on the right, the store on the right um, that's next to the dance studio. Um, we're aiming the first week of November, um, just getting some like shelves done and stuff like that. And so um, I guess for this committee today is um, we want to just put a sign up um, in in the, on the top window in the front of the store. Um, the store is going to have um, African kind of gifts and products and then a section um, specifically for a local um, small business like, you know, women and moms that are doing stuff at home are going to kind of put that stuff in the store as well. Um, that's pretty much it. The same sign company that put the sign up that's on there right now is going to be doing the sign. So they were thinking they would, as they take the one sign down, they would put the one up. And if there's more, uh, yeah. Rabina, a couple, a couple of questions for you. It looks to me as sure. though the sign is the exact same sign, size, sign, height, width as the previous sign that you're taking, you're taking down, and it's also centered under the the window above it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I think it, when. Um, so I want to be transparent. I think because the other sign's oval and then this is rectangular, so it might like dimensionally wise be slightly like bigger, just in terms of like rounded edges versus like rectangular ones. But it's not going to be like we don't want it to be like end to end the entire wall because that would just be a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a visual uh, okay. that you gave us, uh, and it and it looks like it. <clears throat> is centered under the window and extends out uh I, I it's like a little bit on either side yeah yes right right um and it's a white background black lettering right yes that's correct rubinia um, this, this is lisa cove um it looks like it looks like it's centered um below the window is that correct yeah, I'm looking at the, I just pulled up the agenda because I see it's in there. Yes, it's going to be centered under it. So the same uh, amount of space on either side. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, the visual, this is Jenny. Uh, the photograph that is um, that accompanies the application 
It does not appear to be exactly centered below the window. That's not an issue for me. I just want to clarify for the minutes that it's not exactly centered under the window. Okay, so I, I apologize if it doesn't look centered. I think that's probably the best they could Photoshop it in. Oh, um, but it, it, it will be it will be centered. Yes, I, I can get. Yeah, we'll make sure it's centered. My Forget point is, there. it doesn't it doesn't matter to me except for the record. I'm fine with it being a little bit off center because um, the door and the window below it are 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 not centered. Virginia, I'll I'll put that in the um I'll put that in the motion. I'll add okay. that to the record. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, my final question, Bill McBride, is you have no lighting proposed for this. There's no existing lighting, and you don't intend to put lighting in there. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions uh, by board members? No, no questions? No issues? No concerns? Okay. Um, I have none. I'm sorry, my mic was turned off. Uh, okay. Um, no Can questions? Uh, no further no. questions? I have no questions. Okay. So I'd like to okay. make a motion. Lisa, would you make a motion, please? Yes. At the meeting on the HPB October 14, 2020, I make the motion that the HPB approve with conditions uh, the application for a sign made by Rubinia Duarte at 15 South Main Street. Uh, the the conditions are to submit as proposed with the addition of centering the sign under the above window. The motion is made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? I'll second, second. Virginia. This is Jenny. Jenny, okay. Jenny, second. Uh, okay. Roll call. Do we have a vote? Roll call. Uh, Chairperson McBride? I vote yes. Approved. Member, Member Cove? Yes. Member Searle? Yes. Member Morrow? Yes. And Member Harrington? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Good. Okay, well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good luck to you. Thank you. Rubiana? Rubiana? Yes, Steve? Yeah, you still, when this is all done, you need to do the, uh, I don't know if you did a building permit application for it already or just the HPB. I, I did both. I think I did okay. both. I think I was, I was sending you like, I know, Steve, I'm sorry. I know I sent you like a number of different things. So I did send it with like the second check as well. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone. Okay, this is Bill McBride. Uh, uh, the next application is for a sign on 50 State Street, Building One. There are two. There are two applications for signs on 50 State Street. This is Building One. Um, do we have uh, someone uh, present who would like to present that application? I think we did a little while ago uh, with. Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie. Yeah. Uh, Bonnie? Muted? Bonnie is, <clears throat> Bonnie's muted. Bonnie, you're muted. There you go. Hi. So um, our building J is what I was uh, proposing for, not building one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm building J. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, I am currently the owner of Miguel Creative. It's down at 50 State Street um, next door to the state place. Um, I currently have a sign that says uh, French Press, Letterpress and Design slash Miguel Creative. And um, unfortunately, a couple years ago, um, French Press uh, moved out and I've been in the space as Miguel Creative for the last couple years. Um, I'm still going to run Miguel Creative as a business. However, I want to use the retail space for um, uh, to sell uh, handcrafted uh, gifts and vintage goods. And um, so I am starting another business called Notion. And I think you have the uh, proposal for the sign. It's basically the same sign, darker wood with um, silver letters. Um, Bill McBride, um, it, it it's not exactly the same sign at all. 
I mean, the same, same wood, like it'll be a wood sign, uh, same size. Is the, it is the same exact size as the French press uh, Miguel Creative sign was? Yes. Same height, same width, same location? Yes. And 84 it, inches. Oh, okay. Bill, on, on, our, on our application here, it looks like this existing sign is 29 inches high, but then somebody wrote 24 inches high on the new sign. They wrote it in over the 29. Is that correct, Bonnie? Yes. Okay, so it's a little okay. bit small. It's a little bit, um, okay. I wrote that in based on the, the linear footage of the frontage on the building. Okay, so the sign is actually small. It's actually not as tall. Correct. Correct. Okay. Only because it, then it matches up with the linear footage of the requirement in the code. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank and, you, the, and the width stays 84 inches, right? Length, 84 inches. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, any questions uh, from board members? This is Ginny. I don't have a question, I have a comment. Are you ready for comments, Bill? Sure, yep. I think the sign is too high. It's too tall in relation in relationship, well, first of all, to the sign next door, which is less important in my mind than is the height of the sign in relationship to the eave of the porch roof and the um, and the uh, gee, I'm not seeing a I guess that's a dormer or the panel that shows uh, in gray with a white frame around it. I'm not sure that's entirely that's the, clear. That's the second floor. That's the window okay. to the second floor upstairs. Okay. Well, in any case, when I was down there looking at the building and looking at the two signs, I recognized the sign that's up there now is not the correct sign. And your new sign is going to be even, it is going to be five inches shorter than the one that's on there now. But even that, in my opinion, is too too high. It's too tall for the proportions of the building, in my opinion. I think it needs to be reduced by perhaps more than the five inches, but I'm not prepared to say how much it is because I don't have any, there's no, um, there's no way I can address scale on this photograph beyond, beyond saying I think the sign is too tall. So this is Lee, this is Lisa Cove. Um, Virginia, that, that's a good point. I'm just wondering, uh, Bonnie, would you be uh, um, objected to maybe making the height of the sign the same height as the Taylor's one right next to it? Since you don't have a lot of stuff on the sign, it just has that one big word. Would you be okay to do something a little slimmer? Um, well, the um, there's brackets on the back of this sign that are attached to the building, and honestly, I am with this COVID. I'm really on a budget, and I'm trying to use reuse as much materials as I can to um, make this affordable for me to even move forward with. And um, if I could cut it down five inches, that would actually Actually, it, it would be pretty close to that Taylor sign now, um, but well, uh, the, the brackets go to I, a certain height. I don't know that you can drop the whole sign five inches. Then you would have a you you, you would have an issue of the sign being too low. No, uh, they're not dropping the sign, Bill. They're not dropping the sign. They're just going to make it shorter. They're leaving it at the same place. The height of Bill, the height, this is Jenny. Bill, the height of the sign had to be reduced to comply with code. With the sign oh, code, uh, sign ordinance. Uh huh. Okay. So um, I, I, I'm not quite clear as to why reducing the height of that uh, is going to interfere with the brackets behind it. Like, why can't you use the same brackets? Well, I, uh, but, what I want to do. I want to use the same brackets, but if I go less than five inches, it's the brackets going to be over the top of the sign. 
their well, pre-existing yeah, bracket, their pre-existing brackets, and when I look at it, the max she could do and not show the brackets that are already existing is five inches at this point. If you go any more than that, there are two metal brackets that are going to show above the sign. If you drop it five inches, would it not be the same height as the sign right beside you or the other establishment? Bill, the brackets will show. You can't drop the brackets that are existing. The Steve, no, you didn't. Steve, you, 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 you missed my point. You yeah, it was not point. the question, Steve. My, my, Steve, if you take off five inches from that sign, yes. and you said you could do that, still do that with the existing brackets, wouldn't it be this, about the same height as the sign right to the right of yes. them, your, your next door neighbor? Yeah. Yep. It would be closer, yes. It'd be, very, it'd be close, but it's not exactly. Yes. I don't think it needs to be exact. This is Jenny. Right. I don't yeah. think it needs to be exact. I just think it needs to be shorter. And I can't, because these are, because there's no dimension on the Rosalindo Taylor sign, I've got no idea how tall that sign is. So I don't know. What does that mean? I don't know. Are you saying the, the sign, the, the reduction of the five inches already from the 29 to the 24 is the max that you can do and not expose the brackets that are already pre-existing on the building? We got that. We got that, Sid. Uh, but but, but uh, dropping that five inches would get a lot closer in height to the sign right beside you. Right. All right. Right. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Somebody have a comment? Okay. So why don't we drop that sign five inches in height? That's, that's, that's what it says in the application. That's what it says in the application. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to uh, uh, make, make a motion, motion and vote on it? Yes, on October okay. 20th, on October 20th, 2020, the following motion was made. I make a motion that the HPB approve as submitted the application for a sign made by Bonnie Miguel at 50 State Street, Building J. The motion is made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? Lisa? Yes. Make sure you stipulate that it's 24 by 84. It is. It's written in the application as 24. Okay. It's Thank you. Okay. Good. It, okay. This is Jenny. It's it's been corrected on the application. Correct. Okay. It's All not right. Shown on okay. The application. It's been corrected. Well, I would also. I would also. I mean, no one has asked a qu the question regarding lighting. Are you going to have any lighting for this sign or not? Is there lighting yeah. on the building already? Okay. No lighting. Okay. No lighting, no changes. Okay. Okay. So do we want, so, to go, want to go through roll call? Okay. Go ahead. You made the motion. Uh, we want to do roll call? Sure. We didn't um, have a second. There's no second. Okay, I had a second. Second? 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 Uh, I'll, second. I'll second. Bill McBride, I second. Bill, okay. 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 Roll call. Member uh, Chairperson McBride? Yes. Member Cove? Yes. Member Cyril? Yes. Member Morrow? Yes. And Member Harrington? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Thanks, Bonnie. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, the next applicant is 28 South Main Street, uh, also a sign. Is, are, is, is someone from uh, the applicants uh, available to talk? Yes, uh, this is Ian McDonald from uh, Historic Sign Restoration. Hi, Ian. Would you tell us uh, what you propose to do in yes, your application? Um, yes, uh, we're going to do uh, cut-out letters uh, fabricated from inch-and-a-half thick or one-inch thick high-density urethane. Uh, they're primed and painted with a long oil uh, primer. Uh, they're painted with uh, a satin black bulletin enamel. They are uh, uh, finished on all sides, of course, and then they are uh, mounted on the existing wall 
centered over the door uh, under the existing lights uh, on the building. So, but it doesn't look like that is those lights are uh, over the existing sign right now. It was the previous sign, right? Yes, there was a sign there in that exact same location at one time. Uh, from what I could tell, it looks like it also might have been individual letters uh, similar to what is down at the other end of that same building, the uh, salon or the uh, uh, art studio. I forget what it's called, but it also has uh, individual letters mounted on the fascia. Mm -hmm. Okay, my, my 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 issue is you got three lights that exist there now because the previous sign covered a much wider area. Uh, now you've got that looks funny with with three lights rather than two lights. Well, there's actually four lights there. Oh, there's, I didn't there's see two that. in the middle. There's yeah, two okay, in the you're right. That, yeah, it's, and then at the end. This oh. is this is Ginny. There are lights all the way across the building, and they're evenly spaced. Oh, that's okay. right. Yeah. I think okay. the sign would look awkward if it if it was not centered over the door. Yeah, I agree, Ginny. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, may I, may I, Ian? May I ask you? Uh, now, the sign is already in place, I noticed. It is, yeah. My apologies. I did not realize I had to go before the board before uh, I installed. Uh, when I spoke to Steve, I, I don't think I asked enough questions about that because I was so far under what was allowed with the uh, square footage. Uh, that was my, you know, that was a, a faux pas on my part. Also, um, if you've been by the location and seen it, in my opinion, I, I thought it was a little too uh, simple. Uh, the client, of course, likes this design. I added two accent bars on either side of the sign, but I did not mount them uh, permanently in case you guys didn't like it and you wanted me to take it down. Uh, this well, is what Jenny is again. This is Jenny again. Steve, I apologize. I'm going to digress, and I hope that you'll bear with me. Ian, how is how is the sign mounted? What what is Each, the physical? Tell me the, about the physical fastening to the yep, building. Yep, uh, I did not want to penetrate the stone face, so each letter is installed with 100% silicone uh, uh, adhesive, so that it has the flex and so that it'll take the expansion and contraction from the sub between summer and winter. Okay. What well, now? How hard or easy is it to get that silicone off the stucco? Oh, it's it's not hard at all, actually. Um, if it's uh, if the letters come down, the silicone can be rubbed right off. So it's okay. not a permanent mounting at all. Okay. No, well, no. It's, it's, it's enough that the letters won't fall, uh, but it's not enough that you'd have to sandblast the building or in any way um, deface that original. Uh, stucco work on there. I really was doing my best to uh, not have to mess with that, penetrate the surfaces, or in any way, you know, go into the uh, uh, structure of that of that stone. Uh, Ian, this Thank is Lisa. You. Ian, uh, this is may I may I finish? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lisa. Thank you very much for that. When I was there looking at the sign, um, I see multiple penetrations from previous signs. <laughs> And I know that the stucco there has recently been completely redone at great expense to the building owner. And yep. it concerned me enormously that signs are being mounted through that stucco because it introduces, um, it provides locations for water to penetrate and get behind the stucco and blow off the stucco yet again. So thank you very much yep. for your Good mounting. Point. And well, you uh, okay, that's a valid point and we, we solved that problem. Yeah. Uh, th this is Lisa Cove. Ian, I have a question. Um, you state that that what's on there now is not all that you want to put up, and that's all I have on my application. Did you say you wanted to put something next to the already stated um, letters that are up there? Well, if I could share my screen, I could show you what I did. Well, I it's, put... it it really needed to be in the application. 
Yeah, Rachel, we can't. Did you add yeah. it? Uh, well, there are... what I put, like I said earlier, I, I put two little one inch uh, tall accent pieces on either side that I put up with uh, VHB tape so that they would be able to be taken down if, if, uh, and I just, the only reason I did that was because I just didn't like to be honest. I, I thought it was just had too, it was too plain. It needed well, a little. Uh, you know what, Ian, we can't, we can't address that without seeing what you want to do. You're, sure. you're welcome to, we'll, we'll pass, we'll rule on what you're proposing here in the application. If you want okay. to come back and propose a, a, a little modification, you're welcome to do that. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Well, okay. I'll, I'll talk to the owner of the store because he, he didn't ask for this. That This was all me. So. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that was me getting is, carried away with uh, uh, thinking I'm some kind uh, of designer you know, or something. Yeah, this is yeah Jen, you know what you do. This is Jenny again. I was there. I've been there to look at the sign. I'm sorry that other people have not actually gone and looked at the sign as it is already. He and I agree that it would look, it looks, the photo that accompanies the application does look quite plain. The two lines on either end, I think, sort of frame the sign without actually being a frame. So should you decide to come back, I would have no objection to that. Okay, Jenny. Yep, uh, we're 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 inviting you to come back if you choose. Okay. Hey, uh, in the meantime, to hang out with you guys is good. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Lisa, you want to make a proposal? Sure. At the meeting on the HPB October 14, 2020, I make a motion to approve as submitted the application for a sign made by Ian McDonald at 28 South Main Street. Motion made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? I second. Bill McBride. Bill. Roll call, please. Okay. I vote yes. Okay, Member Cole? Yes. Member Cyril? Yes. Member Morrow? Yes. And Member Harrington? Yes. Mark? Harrington? Okay, we got it. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay, well, thank you, Ian. And thank you, Ian. Welcome back. Uh, we'll, Appreciate we'll welcome. your time. Thanks. We'll see. We'll talk again, I'm sure. All righty. Thanks. Okay. The. Hello. Okay. The next uh, applicant is 50 State Street. This is building G is in golf for a sign. Brian. Do we have uh, Brian Myers here? I'm here. Yeah. Brian, would you tell us what you propose in your sign, please? Sure. Um, um, with uh, Copperleaf Brewing, uh, and we would like to put a decal on the window of the front door that is um, our logo, and it's uh, just a it's a vinyl that will make it look and when it uh, adhere to the inside of the window. It'll make it look like a frosted glass or etched glass um, um, visual of, of our logo on the window. And that's the logo you have, which is a leaf, right? It's the leaf with the, the hop at the bottom of it. And that's, there should be a drawing in there of an, a yep. black outline because I can't right. do, do a drawing of frosted glass. So. Yeah, no, Brian, we, we have it. Brian, this is Lisa Cove. Is this actually just an applique that's stuck on the window? Yes, it's a vinyl with an adhesive on it that uh, the person that's making it will actually apply it. And then at some point in the future, it can be removed and the glass cleaned. So it's okay. Not so there. so does this does this actually have to come in front of the board, guys? Isn't this just a removable sign on the inside of a window? It's a window sign. Yeah, yeah. but it's an allowed it's window permanent. sign. It's not permanent. It is signage. It's signage. Okay. It's signage. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody have any questions, any issues, anything they want to talk about? I'd like to say that I saw the uh, projecting sign on the building when I was looking. It's a very nice sign, and I like that sign as well. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Good. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay, Lisa, if you would, please make a motion. 
Um, I'd like to make a motion for October 14, 2020 to approve as submitted the application for a sign made by Brian Myers at 50 State Street, Building G. A motion made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? I'm Bill McBride. I second that motion. Bill, roll call, please. Chairman uh, yes, McBride. Yes, I vote yes. Member Cove. Yes. Member Cyril. Yes. Member Morrow. Yes. And Member Harrington. Yes. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. You All right. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. You. Hey, hey, Brian. I have one Alrighty. question. When are yeah. you guys opening? When are you opening? Uh, we hope to be open before the end of the year. The whole COVID thing really threw yeah, everything yeah. for a loop. And uh, sure. but the good news is, is that we we did have a flooring issue, but it should be taken care of as of today. And hopefully by in the next week or so, we'll actually be able to start moving equipment in and Great. putting finishing touches on it. So we're um, very excited. Great. We look forward to it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. OK. The next uh, item on the agenda is uh, six Elm Book Drive uh, windows. Um, do we have uh, Robert Rowe? I think we Robert Rowe was on the line. Uh, yes, Robert, I'm, if you're there, would I'm you connected. tell us? Would you tell us uh, what you'd like to do, please? Well, the uh, Steve was. I thought Steve was saying something. Um, the uh, upper windows in this uh, and Six Elmbrook were replaced um, a few years ago, and the customer would like to replace the lower windows that were not done at that time and replace them uh, with similar windows. Okay, and I and and I I see from the specs that you provided that we're replacing wood windows with wood windows. Is that correct? All wood right. windows, right? Yep. And I see from the spec. Well, as best I can tell, do, do these windows uh, uh, cover the exact same dimensions as the previous windows in height? and width exactly and design exactly no no change to the exterior other than removing the storm windows and replacing the uh, existing sashes and jams this is jenny searle why are the windows being replaced what is the reason for the replacement well a couple of them are cracked and they're all single pane um, uh, windows, no thermal panes. What's cracked? The window? Window glass? Window glass. Are there storm windows? There are aluminum storms in there now. Okay. Uh, it's my, this house was uh, constructed about 1945. Windows of that era are, were still being fabricated with high quality old growth lumber. Um, Studies have clearly proven that historic windows, when well maintained and, and have well fitting uh, storm panels on them, perform equally as far as uh, energy efficiency goes. And um, I don't, it's my opinion that there, there's no need to replace existing windows <laughs> here in a usable condition. Repairable Could you condition. tell us what your what your motivation is for replacing these windows? Well, uh, the, my customer would like to replace the windows. I'm the contractor. Okay, uh, well, and why, some of the why windows, do they want to replace Some of the windows don't, don't open. Um, the They're waste, probably paint. Excuse no, me, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Give me the for interrupting. And, the weights and pulleys aren't working. Um, I, I disagree with the storm windows and and the single pane windows are energy efficient. They are not. Um, there's too many. There's too much air infiltration, and um, the, the windows that are been replaced upstairs are so much uh, one easier to operate and so much more energy efficient. Um, the pictures that I sent in, you can see the upper windows, and uh, uh, they, uh, they 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 mirror the you know the lower windows as far as design goes. Um, the customer would like to replace them with similar windows that they have installed upstairs. Uh, I, I would be happy to provide copies of the studies that, that uh, show that 
well-maintained uh, and operating single pane windows with storm windows uh, compete uh, favorably with new windows. Uh, if the windows don't open, it's probably because they're painted shut. That's a simple repair. If the pulleys, uh, if the chains or flash cords and weights are problematic, that's also a repair. There's nothing that you've told me that you've told me that makes me believe that these windows need to be replaced. Well, my customer would like to replace them with similar windows that they have up in the upper part of the house. I and understand. So of operation, I understand. and that they don't have uh, to to repair the windows that are here. Um, and again, I would like to see that study, but I'm like I said, um, I the windows are more. If we take out the the pulleys and weights and insulate. The insulation value goes up throughout the whole, uh, the whole house. Um, you don't have the air infiltration that you have. So, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of interference on this. Um, um, Lisa needs uh, to sit sound, still. Um, uh, we, so you're saying they want to replace them, eliminate the storm windows because they think that these new windows are more efficient than the existing windows with storms on them. Is that correct? Absolutely. And there's some windows are already damaged and cracked. Um, I don't think there's, uh, uh, I'd have to really look at the ones there's, uh, there's no storms, and I don't know if all the parts and all the screens for the storms are there. Perfectly honest with you. So this well, is this, those are, those this are all is, solvable problems. Those yeah, are, those are guys. This is Lisa uh, Cove. This is Lisa Cove. I, I think we're talking to the wrong person. I mean, the applic the the homeowner probably should have been here, not the person who's selling them the windows. So you know, trying to talk the guy to sell that's selling him the windows into not selling him the windows is kind of crazy, don't you think? I mean, it, it needs to be well, the, I, the the homeowner. I, I this is Jenny. I agree, but the owner is not here. So maybe okay. we should. I'm, I, 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 I'm going to make a proposal here, uh, and that is that we defer this uh, to the, the next HPB meeting. And we want the applicant to come in and talk about uh, why they want to do this. But before that happens, I'd like, uh, uh, and we've gone through this before with people, we have professionals who uh, we can recommend to you who will come in and analyze uh, how these windows can be rehabbed and, and fixed without complete replacement. And so before we entertain this again, I would like, uh, and Steve, you can you can provide uh, the names of people. We would like one of our uh, people to review those windows and tell us whether they're, they are repairable. Um, because I think Ginny's point is a good one. And that is today's wood is not as good as as it was in 1945, and and uh, uh, the window manufacturer would know that too. Um, uh, so that's that's what I propose. Okay. Bill. Bill. Yep. Bill, this is Jenny again. I would yep. also like I would also like for the board to understand that double pane windows have a seal, and that seal fails in about 20 years. And then you have to replace the windows again because there is no, uh, the windows are not fabricated to allow simply replacing glass. You have to replace the full windows. So once these windows are gone, you're setting up a replacement about every 20 to 25 years of replacing all the windows again. Yeah, I, I but you. that's not the base. That's not the basic issue here. Right. Jenny. So we'll we'll the defer this. Right. Let's defer this is, and we'll talk about it again. Yep. Yep. And we and Steve will will give the applicant the the names of of some professionals 
who we know can come in and take a look at these windows and tell us whether they can be reasonably repaired. Thank you. Okay. So that's that's what I propose. Um, Lisa, you want to make a motion that uh, says that? Um, I make a motion October 14th, 2020, uh, that the HPB defer to next meeting the application for windows made by Robert Rowe at 6 Elmbrook Drive. Um, motion made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? Second. I second Bill McBride. Roll call. Roll call, Linda. Uh, roll call, Linda. Dorothea. Bill, McBri Bill McBride. Muted. Hold uh, on. I vote yes. Okay. Lisa Cove, yes. Member Cyril? Yes. Member Morrow? Yes. Member Harrington? Yes. Okay. So this will be deferred till next okay. meeting. Okay. Uh, and let me add to that, Steve. You know of uh, a number of uh, uh, people that we've used for this purpose before who are professional um, uh, repair guys for wood windows who have done this before. And would you give those names to the applicant, please? Sure. Steve? And I'll, I'll note that on the motion. Steve, uh, the, Jenny, this is Jenny Searle. Steve, Steve, um, Steve Jordan, who has been on that list, I believe, sent a letter to the village. He is no longer uh, working and, and is not available. Correct. It's so correct. If, you, if you need okay, some other a, names, I'll a, be happy to give you other names. Okay, that's a side issue. Yeah, let's uh, let's. Okay. Steve knows Thank what you. he's got to do. Okay. Okay. Um, next applicant is. Uh, uh, windows at 37 Courtney Circle, um, uh, and the applicant is Chris Harrington. Is Chris or his representative available, please? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, are you Chris? Yes, I am. And you're Chris, you're the owner? Yes. Okay. My wife and I own the home. Okay. Um, uh, let me provide everybody with background, make sure we're on the same page. The, we reviewed this uh, situation back in the September HPB meeting, and the conclusion that the board found was as follows. Um, board members expressed concern that the previously existing wood windows were replaced with windows that are different material and design. Member Searle stated that the replacement uh, windows uh, are, are not compatible with the village design guidelines. Okay, so that was where we left off, and that was why we're here today to review that. Let me, let me tell you uh, before we, each member has a chance to uh, express their opinion, um, the, the board asked uh, a, a consultant that we use uh, for various issues, to review various issues. Her name is Maria Hewitt. She's former uh, uh, chair of the uh, APRB uh, and, and an architect uh, in the village. Um, we ask her to review this situation and give her our opinion as to what uh, the design code uh, specifically uh, Section 5A of the Village Design Code standards has to say about this kind of situation. I'm gonna ask Steve, uh, our building inspector, to read the last paragraph of her uh, document uh, as to how she uh, found this situation. Steve, if you would. Yeah. The conclusion of Maria's uh, findings under Would section, you read that verbatim, please? For, read the verbatim. Under the Section 5A Rehabilitation Standard for Post War Houses of Village of Pittsburgh Building Design Standards, the type of windows installed are acceptable in terms of materials. Number two, from far, the appearance matches the characteristics of the windows required of these period houses. Number three, the Munton configuration is unperceivable from a distance to recognize 
that these are sandwiched between the panes of glass. Number four, the panes resemble what already existed, making number of panes per sash appropriate to this period house. And number five, the door is a full glass door with divided lights, unless it is replacing what originally was there. No evidence that this type of door was common in this period era houses. Okay, and that's that's the findings of Maria Huma, Hewitt on this issue as we requested her to um, review. Um, and so I'm going to open it up to board members to comment on where they feel we are on this issue. Um, and I'd like comments from everybody, please. This is Jenny. Uh, this is Jenny, Bill. Um, hi, Jenny. I'm, could you tell me whether the, whether the dividers are in between two panes of glass? That's what it looks like to me from the street. Yes, they are in between the two panes of glass. Okay, thank you very much. That's sure. my only question. Okay, I, 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 um, let me let me make my comment to uh, Bill McBride. I, I went to the house a couple of times in the last uh, week um, and looked at the windows from the street. I did not go right up to the windows but I looked at them from the public way of the street. They look to me, I can't distinguish those windows from wood, uh, um, classic wind, wood windows. But my, my observation, my opinion. Okay. Um, uh, how about uh, other members of the board? Uh, how do you, how do you? This is this is Lisa Cove. I have a question. So basically, the the material is fibrex. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So fibrex is considered a wood window, or I mean, it says forty percent wood fiber by weight, sixty percent thermoplastic polymer by weight. So I guess this would be a question for Ginny. I guess is that, I mean is that is that a wood window? No, it's not. It's a okay, fiberglass. So it's a fiberglass type window. The fibers are wood fibers, not glass fibers. It's a okay, wood then, fiber, but okay, it's not so, a wood window. So we're. So what Maria said is that this, according to our documents, our uh, interior standards, or not the interior standards, our design guidelines design, state that design we can, guidelines. that we can we can replace all wood windows with fibrex. I don't remember ever seeing that in our design guidelines. I believe well, you can you can read the design guidelines, Lisa. Did you I read mean, them? I have them. I have them right here. Is there is there? A, I have the I design guidelines. Is, is there a page? Is there a page? The, yes, the post-war houses section. Excuse me. That this this guidelines I read that Maria quoted were exactly off of our guidelines in our historic preservation guidelines right. I, have them, right. I have them right here do we know the page that they're on 90 look at 93 or 95 lisa this is jenny okay, okay. i've got it right here i'll look thank you it's po it's possible that uh when the guidelines were written which was uh several years ago that fiberglass windows were not easily available readily available but the guidelines do discuss <laughs> Vinyl and aluminum as replacement materials. The record, as, the record should uh, be clear, though, that those design guidelines that um, Maria quoted are dealing with post-war construction. This house is, is post-war, Jeff. Jeff. I, I'm just saying that for the record, that that's generally we would look at wood for wood but the distinguishing one of the distinguishing factors here is that it is a post war house and the design guidelines treat those houses somewhat differently than pre war houses if you will okay Important got it point. all right so i see this in the design standards on page 95 it does state the use of newer materials such as vinyl clad or aluminum clad windows may be an appropriate substitution for wood windows thank you and, That's sort of as long as, as long as 
it is not visibly from a public way distinguishable as being right. Right. I was just looking at the materials. <clears throat> Correct. This is okay. Jenny again. I. It's clear to me that those are replacement windows, and the the difference in my mind is quite obvious. The Muntins on a on traditional wooden windows, no ordinary historic windows. The Muntins are on the outside of the glass. There is a projection outside the glass. It's visible as a projection, and there are shadow lines that show on the glass and make it make the statement that this is a window with true divided lights and these mountains because they are between the two pieces of glass it's it's absolutely flat and there there's a standard sort of a medium gray that those mountains are and will always be because they're not accessible and in my mind i disagree with maria I can tell from the street. I also did not, I didn't get out of my car and I did not walk on their lawn, but it's obvious and visible to me that these windows do not meet, do not meet that standard of being easy, uh, not perceptibly different, but that's my opinion. Um, this is Lisa Cove again. So Chris, you said that there's already um, windows that had been replaced in the past or you're doing them all now? Right, we did. I, I want to say it was maybe three in the past. Um, and, th and those were visible from the street? Uh, only if you come from a certain Chris, direction. Chris, uh, 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 are you sure the situation is analogous in terms of materials and visibility? Yes, I mean, the, the, the windows that we got this past time were identical to what we got Three years ago, I think, when we had them replaced. Oh, okay, where and what was the address of those uh, windows? You know, at our current location. What's the location, right? Thirty-seven Courtney Circle. So, Chris, were the ones that going to address, if I could. Um, so, I guess there was a concern about how the the munchins, which I think is probably the little pieces of wood. Paint between the panes of window or between the panes of glass, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes that's they, right. When, when you look at when you look at the old windows with the storm windows in front of them, they had the same appearance of appearing flat and the light separating or the light um, munching separating the light looked to me identical. And if you look at the, the photos I sent from uh, 2012 from what we had from Google Earth, as well as what I just took after we took the the photos of new work, they look identical to me. And that does kind of fit the standard of what it says in the uh, building design standard. For Pittsburgh. Uh, Chris, this is Lisa Cove again. Sorry, I, I never got an, a clear answer to my question. The windows that you had already replaced, you said there was two of them? I believe there were three windows that we replaced. So it was the original windows in the house. We replaced them with the current type of windows that we now have in the front of the and, house. And were those windows, were they on the front of the house? Were they visible to the street? I don't know where those windows were that you had replaced. No, they were um, mostly on the side and the, and the rear, if I recall. Okay, correctly. so then they, yeah, weren't, they were not visible. visible no. And they were not visible. No. So, okay, so the, technically, we don't have to. We don't have to match those no. windows. Okay. Right. So this is. So this doesn't have anything to do with trying to match windows. Then this has completely no, to do with. Can I, can I speak? Can I, may I speak? Sure. Yep. Right. Yes. The windows that are on the side of the house would be visible from a certain certain position on the road. Highly visible? No. But they are. Those side windows are visible. And I just want to point out that if you take. If you take the pictures, any of the pictures in the front of his house, and if I took a picture today and took a picture from three years ago that that is existing, you cannot discern which picture was taken when, as far as by style of window. If you look at the picture taken that Chris presented in an older picture of that house, you cannot <clears throat> discern which picture is the new one, which picture is the old one by the style of window. 
I agree. Um, I appreciate that, Steve, but we know that pictures are very different than real life. And we also know there's some products that we don't approve that people will tell us they look exactly the same. So we can't go by the fact that not, look But Lisa, exactly that's not what the code says. As, we have as, to go by what our existing code is for post-war houses. Right. Right. Yeah, right. right. May, 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 I, may I, it's Mark Harrington, may I inject something here? Um, yep. and, and this is, this is not to sound, you know, like it may come off to certain people. Okay, give it to uh, us. I, I, replaced, I, I replaced and restored over 130 windows in our country house. That was, uh, and it was all inclusive of lead glass. It was an enormous, enormous undertaking. My, my you know, I, but I did that deliberately because I think uh, that was just the way I wanted to, to do our house. Now, so my my prejudice is very in favor of that, but the arguments that I hear that that usurp that uh, are such that we should probably approve it as is. And I think having gone by and having looked at it, is it exactly one thousand percent the same? Probably not. Uh, and but I don't have the expertise to look and compare it with things because I I haven't been on this board long enough to do that. And so I defer okay, to okay, everyone yeah. else on that. But I do think that this is a case where uh, you have a uh, you have a governing statute uh, in, in 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 our governing docs that I don't want to say they they usurp all of these other uh, interests, but you know I I if it were me I vote in favor of uh, uh, what uh, Chris wants to do, and it's not because. His last name is Harrington. I've got an issue with that. But that's <laughs> okay, right. so why, why, don't okay. we save that, why don't we save that for a vote? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, let's get Ken's point of view. On right, this. after we get everybody, right. Ken? Ken? Yes. Ken? I'm here. Where, where do you stand on this? Well... You know, I think the, you know, problem is that the existing windows aren't there anymore. So uh, what are our alternatives? There are well, existing uh, windows uh, here. I, we can't quite look at it that way, Ken. <laughs> I, look, let me, let me, let me. Let me give you my bottom line on this, okay? I uh, and it and it and it goes right back to Section 5A of the Village Design. Yeah. They seem to distinguish between pre-war and post-war houses, um, and it appears what they're saying is that um, this material is the 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 applicant has put into these windows is acceptable if you can't distinguish it from um, the the wood windows that existed previously from a public way, which is a street out in front. Um, now I'm going to ask Jeff Turner to give us his legal opinion of that interpretation of of uh, Section 5A of the Village Design Standards. Jeff, please. What you, I'm not sure what you're asking me in terms of a legal interpretation. I, I'm saying, is what I just expressed uh, a fair representation of what that Section 5A is, it, it has established as a standard for evaluation? Yes. Except I would say that it's going to be a matter of fact, not law, whether you think there is a difference between what you can perceive from from the road or from a distance. Yeah. Jenny feels yeah. like, I mean, I've heard Jenny say that she thinks there is, that there's a difference between the muntins that are in between the glass and the exterior applied muntins. Um, so that, I guess, is what I'm hearing. But in terms of a replacement material, 
and not requiring wood for wood, I think that distinction is is because it is a post-war house. Right. Okay, okay. So then it comes down to our individual subjective opinions about whether visually this looks like a wood window from the street, right? Is that is that correct? Is that right? I guess I'm not sure I would call it subjective. I would think that it's still objective. Uh, it's not anything that you feel, it's what you see. So yeah. that's an objective viewpoint. They okay. may, you may differ right. in that objectivity, but it's objective, not subjective. Yep, got it. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah, well, it comes down to the personal uh, opinions of, of the individual members of the board. As to what yeah, they no, I, would say it's, I, I would say it's not an opinion. I would say it's an objective observation. It's not whether you like something or dislike something. It's it's what is what do you perceive? That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. So if if nobody else has anything they want to add to this then I'm going to call for a motion and a vote, okay? Um, anybody else want to add anything else to our discussion? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Well, I, have a, I have a question that I've been mulling over here. I mean, I remember in the past, we this is Jeff Turner again. We yeah. have asked people to put on exterior applied muntins, even in the case where we've got the double pane insulated glass. And I just don't know if that's a possibility here. I don't know if it's possible with that hmm. with that uh, window. The owner may know. Yes, I, I talked to Anderson. They said that they do not make that. They, they do not have that ability for these particular windows. I, I'm not surprised. I don't think it's possible with the fiberglass windows. Yeah. Can I say one last thing, if I may? Yep. Okay, so uh, again, going with the, the standards for what's set, set forth with these types of houses in Pittsburgh, uh, the first thing it says is uh, the, the original windows shall be retained unless they are beyond repair. And uh, virtually all the windows that we had were beyond repair. Uh, we had issues with the glass and the individual panes. Uh, we had issues with the different storm windows. Um, and so when we needed to replace them, it was a matter of either going with new, brand new wood windows, which were going to be extraordinarily expensive, or find the best quality windows that we could that matched that visual most closely. And that's what okay. we Okay, but with all due respect, Bill McBride, that's a moot point at this point, okay? I mean, we can't verify there to deny it or attest to it. So. But, but, but Bill, I would point out that we have often relied on, in situations like this on the applicant's statement regarding lack of repairability. And I think that was the key part of what Mr. Harrington was, was saying in terms of your decision making. I just wanted to make it clear it wasn't something I was randomly trying to do because it was extraordinarily mm -hmm. expensive just to replace them and it was a need. It wasn't just a mm -hmm. whim. Um, okay. the other thing I want to, if you don't mind me pointing out, the other thing is that at the last meeting, we or you as the board decided to go to Maria for an opinion. Maria gave an opinion. That opinion should be taken in as merit by her expertise and what she has said in regards to this application. Uh, okay, let me let me uh, look. I'm a big supporter of Maria's consultation, but it is Maria's point of view. Okay, um, we will certainly take that into consideration, but it doesn't have to dominate and control our thinking. Okay. Okay. Well, well I, all I, right. If we, don't have, if, if we don't have any more questions, I think that we should just put it to vote. Yep, I think so too. Lisa, you want to make a proposal? 
Um, as a meeting of the HPB on October 14, 2020, I make a motion to approve as submitted the application for windows made by Chris Harrington at 37 Courtney Circle. Um, Lisa Cove uh, made the motion. Uh, Do I before you before you go um, ahead, because I just think that for future reference. You know, getting back to what I said, that these windows were replaced without permission from the board, there should be something put in this statement that the next time it's going to be harder. Well, well we can't, <laughs> this is not the time and place for that, okay? Okay, well, there should be, though. Yeah, I, 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 I understand, but... Uh, okay, uh, well, let me, can I speak to that just briefly? Sure. Yeah. We have always adopted these as-built applications as though the, the viewpoint is whether or not that would have been approved pre-construction. So that's the standard, whether or not Mr. Harrington had come with these windows as replacement windows uh, prior to pulling out the old ones and, and putting in the new, that is the frame of reference that we should be looking at. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I fin continue? Yep. Yes, yep. please. Okay, so I'm looking yep. for a second on that motion. Uh, Bill McBride, I'll second. Okay, okay. so now we are Roll taking call. this to a vote. Roll call. Member, uh, Chairperson McBride? I vote approval, yes. Member Cove? Yes. <clears throat> Member Searle? No. Member Morrow? Yes. And Member Harrington? Yes. Okay. Motion, Motion is again. passed. Thank you very uh, much, Chris. Chris Thank Chris you. Thanks, Chris folks. Harrington, this is, this is Ginny Searle again. Uh, yes, I thought. I thought you might be interested in knowing that a former mayor of the village of Pittsburgh lived in your house. Yes, Mr. Holsworth, yes. yes my my chemistry teacher. Was he really? <laughs> yeah, he was my chemistry teacher. And he, oh, that's crazy. He was the yeah. he was the mayor when I was appointed to the board the first time. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Well, so I, you know, I'm sorry this I'm sorry this was so difficult, but it's a, it's a it's a major issue for us, and we had to think it through well. Thank uh, you for being patient, Chris. Much. We appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Thank, thank you. you to the board for uh, trying to maintain the standards of the village. So thank you very much. All yes. right, thank you, Chris. Right, bye bye. Yes. Chris, yeah. Yes. Fill out a building. Fill out the building permit application for me, please, so we can kind of complete the circle. And after okay. it's all inspected and and finalized, sounds good. We'll do. Uh, just date it for for like a current date or backdate it. Um, backdate it is fine. Okay. Very all good. right. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks, folks. <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, last one is 31 North Main Street. Uh, a door. Um. Um, a little background, the applicant uh, made a change to the door um, without going before the board. We rejected that, uh, and the applicant has has um, since revised that that uh, door and door frame and come back to us with a proposal. So do we have uh, the applicant from 31 North Main? You do. It's Steve Sertio. Hi, Steve. Um, Steve, you, you want to talk about uh, what you've done, how you got there, and and uh, what you're proposing? Well, this has been a, a lengthy process. Uh, just so the board remembers, I ignorance of the law is no excuse, especially for a lawyer. But what had happened was several years ago, there was. Uh, a gentleman who cut our lawn, he threw a rock through the outside door, which then led to a contractor to try to fix it, and it was completely rotted. He said, I'll, I'll get you this door. I said it was a beautiful door. We, we put it on, and that ran afoul 
of the rules in the village. And we had a meeting several years ago in a November and, and it was voted down. I was unaware of what the process was only because I'd never had it happen before, but that's neither here nor there. And we can point back and forth with regard to it. I understand the issue deals with the side light. That's again, my first appearance, I had no idea what that was. And then I was told, I think my door in the bridge originally had a uh, zero side lights. And the door I have now in my business has one side light. I just wanted to just, if I didn't say before, the original door was rotted and it had to be replaced. So we put that one door in, that wasn't acceptable. We closed up the side light. So it's just a door with no side lights. And I've been told by Mr. Lau that that's not acceptable. So we uh, hired I Bureau or Bureau Architects. Uh, that was a name that came highly recommended. I've been dealing with a woman by the name of Jennifer A. Ridge. She seems very talented. She proposed a couple of options. The one that I chose is the one that we submitted. I was told, given a ballpark figure of maybe $2,000, $2,500 to do the work. I just received a quote for $6,700. How, how much? $6,700 to complete option two, which is the one that we put before the board, which is, you know, a, a, not something I do. I'm going to try to get other quotes. Uh, and that's kind of where we are right now with this option. I've been, I've been kicking around the idea about presenting a proposal to the board about just centering the door. Uh, that might be more economical for us. I don't want to rehash what happened years ago, but as I said then, this isn't a home, it's a business. It's always been a business uh, since at least the, the hairdresser before. I've made major improvements on the interior and exterior. I apologize for running afoul of the no side light, two side light, and only having one side side light. But I'm trying to fix the door, make everybody happy, but do it in a way that's economically reasonable. And six thousand seven hundred dollars, just to me, I was flabbergasted when uh, the quote came to me last week. I mean, that is that one? Es week. Is that just one estimate, Steve? It is. It is just one estimate. I'm going to try to get others, but this was somebody that you know was a subcontractor for my general contractor, who came highly recommended, and uh, was very talented. But that just seems to be like a lot of money to me. I'd almost be happy to replace the door if I could with a no side light door. But I understand from my general contractor, and I know Steve Loth, and if I'm wrong, it's because it's not intentional. It's nothing I'm familiar with. But maybe Steve, because I know he's talked to Mr. Leopold. I think there's an issue with the size of the door frame that made it impossible years ago for my my contractor to get the appropriately sized door unless it was custom made is what I was told then. But I'll defer to Mr. Lau if, if he has any input on a correction that we've discussed in the past. He and I have spoken I got 20 times about it. He's been very diligent, seeks me out and vice versa to try to resolve this amicably. Um, this is Lisa Cove. I'd like to give you a little history um, just for the record. This is a center gable uh, Gothic revival built before 1855. The National Register of Historic Places 2016 <clears throat> district expansion document states, it's a, it's a two story frame house, sided gable roof with front cross gable at center. It's a three bay facade with center entrance. Two narrow side lights at front door. It was a 19th century saloon on North Bank of the Canal. A 1966 photo does not show any side lights. So it seems to me that there were side lights at one time, or there weren't side lights at one time, and then somewhere after 1966, maybe, there were there was a door placed <laughs> with two side lights. And then the one, the door that obviously uh, Mr. Circo Circu uh, replaced had the two side lights. So it looks like maybe originally, and I can't see it on the original pictures very well, but it looks like they did not have any side lights originally. Uh, let me add this to that, uh, Lisa. It's Bill McBride. Um, um, we have searched long and hard for some <laughs> visuals of what that front door looked like uh, historically. We can't find them, they don't exist. Uh, what we have is very vague pictures 
when there was a porch over top of it. So we don't know what was original to this. So then you, we have to go to um, I, I, this. Uh, it's a loose interpretation of a Gothic or revival house, but uh, yeah, I, I'll accept that. I mean, I, I live in a classic Gothic mm-hmm. revival house, and I, 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 I can tell you that Gothic revival doors on houses did have glass in them. I've never seen glass down the sides, but I've seen glass in the doors. Um, um, so that's the perspective that I would put on this issue. Uh, okay. We have to um, decide now. Bill, this is, um, I, I hope you can see this, but this book right here, my little Bible, uh, the Field Guide to American Houses on page 271 shows the classic door styles of this graphic revival. And you'll see that there are certainly doors that have side glass in this uh, document here, if you can take a look at that. And they have side glass and not side glass. Some of them have Correct. glass within Correct. the they doors. Have, yes. Right. They have yes. side glass and not side glass. Correct. So they <clears throat> did have side glass, uh, not in the door. Yes. So I, my, my, my point here is, is the proposal that is on the table right now is not inconsistent with Gothic revival doors, and we have no proof that, that, that originally this Gothic revival door had glass down the sides. This is Jenny speaking. If the, mm-hmm. if the framed opening is too large for a standard door now, either the building always had a single door with the side lights, it may have had a pair of doors, or sometime after the porch was taken off, um, the, the opening was enlarged. I, there's no way of knowing what was originally there or how it happened. I, right. I'm a little surprised that any contractor ever told the owner that the door opening could not be made narrower to accommodate a standard size door. It may have had something to do with uh, the vinyl siding that's on the building. Maybe it could not be made smaller without replacing all of the vinyl siding on either side of it. Um, But I agree with Bill. And now I'm looking at a sheet that is uh, numbered A20. Is that the is that the correct sheet? Uh, Q. I'm so sorry. I don't. I, I don't. Oh, let me look. I have a, a picture of what I submitted. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Uh, Steve, can you help us? Yeah, I'm looking right I, now at my photograph. Uh, I think it's A20. That's. I believe that's the one. All right, oh, and I, off. I'm sorry. I don't know what 820 means, what that number means. I'm so sorry. It's a sheet number. It's on the bottom right hand corner of the sheet. Of, of the drawings from Barrow. Of the drawings from Barrow. You gave yes. us two yeah, drawings this, from Barrow. SK22 uh, and A20. Oh my goodness. I, well, what I have doesn't show me that number. I can tell you what I'm looking at is on the bottom it has Simple doors surround with. Okay, so that's A20. With with chamfered pilasters. Yes, that's A20. Yeah, that's all Greek to me. That's what the gentleman quoted me $6,700. May I ask or just point out um, that when we bought the place, that that there was no front porch on there. There was a green, if anybody remembers, oh gosh, it was like a green vinyl or some sort of fabric overhang that would protect people walking in from rain, I suppose. An awning. Yeah, I'm a removable awning. An awning, yeah. It was like this, this terrible green awning. So I don't know anything about that door, how it got on there. That was a door we had when we purchased the building in 2004. And for what it's worth, that, that front door is not an entrance. Our building is a side door entrance. Huh. Okay, so can I just make some clarifying uh, questions actually so what you are submitting steve is this yeah. sim- simple door surround with chamfered uh pilasters there's is, is, there, is, there, is there glass is this a four p- 
pane glass in the door or is this a solid panel? Solid panel, Steve? Solid yeah, okay. I so there's, so, yeah. so there, because I just couldn't tell. So there's no glass in the door or no side lights. Correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, that All right, can I can I interject on this real quick? Yep. All right. The, the the issue with this and would have been originally with the original door is that that opening is 46 inches. All right. And it creates a problem. So if Steve were to go to replace that door, no matter what, you would either have to try and get a custom 44 inch door to fit in that opening, which they, they aren't going to do. I have researched through door manufacturers that I have utilized for the last 40 years. There's nobody that would make two small side lights that will fit a 36 inch door for that building. So if you were to replace that door with a modern door, no matter what, you would have to infill both sides somehow to accommodate making it in a, a symmetrical doorway because you could not get side lights anymore. And I'm, I'm talking, I went to uh, Mr. Morse from Morse Ash and Door, and I went to Mr. Matthew, Mr. Fields. Nobody would touch that door by putting side lights back on it. So the option would have been to put a single door in there and enclose both sides six inches, no matter what you did in order to make it symmetrical. So the option that Jen has put out from Barrow would have been or should have been the original application had it come before the board when the door was replaced. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yep. I get that. So may I ask, this is Jenny again. May I ask the applicant please, is this, is this door, sheet A20, simple door surrounded with chamfered pilasters, is this what you're happy with presenting to us? Is this I, I what you want us to look at? I aside aside from the cost, Steve, is, is that what you want? The cost, I, yeah, I, I would, I guess what I want to do is what is the easiest thing to get done for, and I thought this was going to be it. Uh, I mean, this, this is the, e if you, and I'm looking for guidance, because um, there was no, it was just a door. There was no covering on the top of it. And I'm not really sure what the flashing is, but there was no roof over it. I just want to know right. what the easiest thing to do is that's going to make you all happy. <laughs> the easiest okay, so, thing for me. That, like, right, that's so, all I really care about. Okay, so what we're saying is, are you submitting this drawing to be approved for tonight's meeting? This one that you gave us, because this is the one that we would approve when we vote. This is the one. Uh, yeah, uh, but yes, I would like that. However, okay. I may have to come back before you with a reapplication if I can't get that done at a reasonable fee. Okay. I don't think $6,500 plus tax is okay. reasonable. That's fine. But but we'll, when we vote on this, it will be this exact, you know, this exact hey. drawing that, that, you're, that well, we would have Lisa, this, this that is, Lisa, Lisa, Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. This is Jenny again. If this is what you want us to uh, look at, then I have comments about this. Uh, I have a couple of comments about this design. Yeah, let's have it, Jenny. Yeah. Okay. At the top of the pilaster, uh, where the entablature starts, if you look at the drawing, there's a there's a couple of lines that say simple entablature. Nope. Below below that, the, at the top of the columns, there should be some sort of capital at the top of the columns even if it's um even if it's simple not at all elaborate even if it's simple there needs to be some uh piece of carpentry trim added at the top of the column additionally in the space between uh, the line that indicates the bottom of the entablature and the first part of the roof cover trim that space, which is shown at the uh, section view, the side view, which is to the left of the drawing, is showing seven and a quarter inches. I'm going to suggest that that, that uh, vertical dimension be increased by about two inches. Uh, that would put it at a probably a, a, a dimensional 10 by 
something by 10, which would make it nine and a half inches at that point. And also the uh, eaves of the little roof cover should extend another couple of inches uh, on either side out from to increase the width of the roof, air, roof projection over the entablature. And there is no dimension for that, but I would say two additional inches. Can I ask you why that need, would need to be done? Because the, the proportions of the architectural feature are, historically speaking, there are traditional proportions, and this is not, this doesn't meet that traditional standard. Okay, let me ask the board this. Again, as I remind you respectfully, the door that was on that, that was ruined and rotted out, had none of what you're saying. It was a simple door. At least I apologize. I thought there was no side lights. Maybe there was two side lights. I really don't remember because that's my wife's office, and I've it's been through that door twice in my life. So I don't know. There, there was no overhang. It was a simple door, and so, somehow the prior owner was able to to have that be the condition. And I buy it that way. I guess I'm just confused as to why this is all being levied upon me to, to do a, to, to do additional. If it was a reasonable fee, I could probably, I had no problems. I'm just frustrated because the door was n nothing like what I'm trying to put on there, even though at this point it's still so expensive. And I guess I'm just wondering why the weight of all this is falling on my shoulders when apparently at some point in the past, the other owner got a pass on this and just had a double side light or no side light door. That's part of my frustration. I can't respond to it. Well, let me, let me respond to that. Okay. Bill McBride. Um, uh, Steve, what we, we all agree with, I think, and probably even you is that that previous door and the design was out of character with and whenever it was put up was out of character with the historic character of the design of that house okay um what Ginny is trying to do is bring it into a little more consistency with what that door should look like uh, uh in a in a quotes gothic revival uh, property um, okay. um, um uh, you know i i i don't know whether it needs to go that far frankly and and what i suggest here is that that Ginny and Barrow get together and and um uh agree to something Okay. Uh, that, excuse, uh, excuse me, Bill. I'm yeah. I'm no longer associated with Barrow because I'm retired, and I. It sounds to me as though the owner would really prefer to just put in a new door, without all the surround. If that's what he wants, I think that's what he should present to the board. I uh, I yeah. I mean that would be an an. an Perfect role, but like I said, with what Steve said, he said that would be very difficult to get done with the size of the door that it is. I don't know, I Steve, Steve, this is, Steve. This is this is Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. This is. I mean, we're talking about getting a custom door to fit the opening. It seems like it would be a lot less expensive than doing all this pretty work around there. I mean, have we looked at, at finding a custom door to fit the opening? I I, I agree. The door, no, I I have not. Okay, so maybe we should go that route. I think that you're going to find be pleasantly uh, surprised. Can you tell me zero side lights, two side lights? I mean, I assume that's, that so, that front door to pass in theory your muster or your, your guidelines. Do I need to have two side lights if possible? No side lights. Tell, uh, tell me that. So, well, so I'm, 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 you this is Jeff Turner. Let me Jeff Turner. Let me talk for a second. Steve, to, to answer your, your concern about why you have the burden when the prior owner did not, you would be perfectly entitled to rebuild that door 
as it was when you bought the house. You would, it would have to be exactly. That's a replacement in kind. If you wanted to do that, you would be able to do it without any board approval. However, if it's something different than a replacement in kind, then you're going to have then the replacement as approved by this board would need to be architecturally appropriate for the house. So that's why it feels that's why it feels like your burden is different than the 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 prior owner's burden but it's really not because you could do exactly what the prior owner had done. Yes. Uh, may, I, you know? may I interject, may I interject oh. something in addition to Jeff's comment? You would need to have photographic documentation of what it looked like, what the door looked like to, to replace it in kind. Correct, Jeff? What, what it used to look like, and we couldn't find that, right? Well, hold on, you hold on. That. Can what, I speak? Can I speak here? You yep, well, let me yep, answer. Yep. Let's see. Let me answer Jenny's question first. I All think right. that is correct, but I can't believe that a, that the real estate agent that from whom Steve through whom Steve bought this doesn't have those pictures. Hmm. All I'm saying is it needs to be documented that it it, it matches the exist the previous exactly. existing. That is that's absolutely right, Jenny. According according to Bob, this is Steve. According to Bob. That door had two small side lights. You cannot replace that exactly. They cannot make it. They will not make it. There are no door manufacturers that will put a door in there with that smallest side light. They will not do it. So there has to be another option. I've gone to Miss I've gone to more session door, Matthews and Fields, the two biggest experts in this city. They will not touch that and put two small side lights on a door on that entryway. So that, okay, this, that's my this point. Is, he, he could absolutely do what was there, provided there's documentation. If he cannot do what was there, then it's going to have to be architecturally appropriate to the structure. That's, that's exactly where we are. That's where this we is, are. This is Jenny again. If, if he's Matthews and Fields and Moore Sash and Door are very good and very reputable companies, and I don't mean my comment I'm about to make in any negative way towards them, but they they have stock doors. If a custom door needs to be made, you either know need to go to Rochester Colonial, their Hartwood. Uh, their Hartwood uh, brand can make almost anything. And if they cannot, there are small local craftsmen who can re who can make things for you that are going to fit there exactly. And they may or may not be more expensive than the six thousand five hundred dollars that they're that um, he's been quoted. My point is, as Jeff has made, if he wants to put in. I don't, if this is not what you want to do, then you should pursue what you do want to do and show us that. And if you need uh, names for custom, um, custom craftsmen besides Rochester Colonial, I can provide you a couple of names. Okay, Jenny, 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 Jenny he, has, he has proposed what he does want to do. It's a little more expensive in his initial uh, but uh, well, but uh, if I, I think can I, would I, rather... can I make one more comment yes. you go. you can you could get somebody to make a 30 inch door and put side lights on it then it does not become a legal front entry for egress for that establishment that becomes another problem it's the reason for him going to a 36 inch entry door the door would not be legal egress for that building if you went to a 30 inch store and put side lights on it which is probably what was there there was probably a 30 inch store with two eight inch side lights can i ask a question about that that legality of the door do we need it in light of the fact we have a side door that would assuming be legal of oh, jeff knows that steve you know that 
that door, I mean, that, that front door is an egress, but we have a legal egress right out the side door, which would be on the southern part of the building. Does that matter at all, factor in at all? Those? I don't think that changes it, no. I believe, no? this is Jenny, on, I believe yes. you need two means of egress out of the building. Right. That's a Steve, that's a Steve Loth call. Steve, do you know the answer to that? The front entry door is supposed to be your main entry egress, and that is the door to the street. Um, I would, that would be the door that would have to be in case, because what if he sells it? But if, if he's going to do something that might be contrary to somebody down the road, the main entry door to the address in the front of that building is that door. You're using the side door as an egress because his office there is fine and dandy, but for future and for the legality of that structure, the front door should be the 36 inch entry. Is that required by code, Steve? So he's required to have two means of egress and exit? No, he's ingress, required ingress, to have, whatever it is. He's, he's required to have the main entrance to the home be a 36 inch egress door. But who okay. decides that the main entrance is the front door, not the side door? That goes through. I'm sorry. I mean, who's to say that the side door, Steve Ralph, the side door is not the main entrance? Is it because the front door faces the uh, street? Oh, I lost everybody. I, you know what? I think I, I think we've lost sight of what our role and responsibility is here. Our role and responsibility of the HPB is to make sure that any replacement door fits the historic character of the house, okay? The front door is the most visible door. Let's concentrate on that, okay? So, so uh, but, I, but I, here's the point on that. Um, Steve Sirku, if you had documentary evidence that that was a 30 inch door with eight inch side length and you wanted to build that, I don't know, and I'm not speaking from a building and fire code standpoint, the, the, there wouldn't be anything left for this board to do. If you wanted, if you had documentary evidence of a 30 inch door with two eight inch side lights or whatever it is, you would be able to replace that in kind. Right. Oh. We haven't we haven't been able to find that, but maybe Steve, you've got it. Maybe you can get it. I don't know if your list if the listing agent would have it or not. This is Jenny. Right. This is Jenny. Bill, he doesn't he doesn't mean the original door. He means the door that was there before this one. Am I right, Correct. Jeff? Yes. That is correct. Yeah. And we don't know how old that door is. Right, it was right. Oh my gosh, it was old enough to be. You could put your finger through the wood. But but again, yeah, I, think we're, I, I think we're. Hold on, this is Lisa. I think we're missing the point, and I think Jeff stated this quite nicely 15 minutes ago. He could either replace in kind. If he can't replace in kind for whatever reason, it's not up to us. What whatever reason it is, then he could go to a historically appropriate front door. Now he asked. Can he put something simple with all without all the the you know yeah. pretty architectural surrounds? That's something that he possibly can, and and we don't know because we haven't seen any submission for that. So Steve <clears throat> Circu, I I would suggest maybe you look at some if you, if cost is an issue and you don't want to spend that money, maybe you should look in to see if you can get a simple a simple door, or maybe take the elaborateness down a bit. Um, and and see if you can do something a little bit more economic. Economic, if yep. you're not willing to pay six grand to have that, what Bar Barrow recommended. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, that's, I'll a, that's a good perspective. Yeah, There's I'll another alternative. This is Turner. Another alternative yep. is to give if this door at A20 is approvable, Steve could get his approval and then go shop the price or. If he wants to reapply for a different door in the future, he could do that. It's up to him. But, uh, you know, if this door is proposed, it sounds like Ginny has some tweaks on. 
I don't know if the rest of the board is in line with that, but it, there is a way for Steve to get an approval tonight, I'm sure, but it would be basically the A20 door. Okay, I, I support that. And and Steve, if if we make a motion to approve the door that, you, that Barrow did for you, you can always come back with an alternative that you like better. All right, that, that sounds like, yes, you've had a long night. I'm, I'm good with all of that. I've, I've got my marching orders about replacement in kind. That doesn't seem likely. I'll speak to Jennifer Ahrens at Barrow to see if she can scale down the A20. If I can't get it um, economically more feasible with what it is, see if, she, see if she can scale it down so I can make a reapplication, for lack of a better term, um, with a scaled down version if I can't find someone to build the A20 as depicted in what I submitted. Does that sound mm -hmm. like what I'm well, yep. I guess my question is, do you want us to vote on what you've submitted tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Because if somebody tells me they can do it for $3,300 next week, I'm going to do it for $3,300 yep. next week. Okay. So, so okay. I, I have a question to the board because Ginny made some very, you know, some, some minor changes that I don't think is going to make a big difference to the person building this, but it does for us. So if the rest of the board feels comfortable with the little tweaks that Ginny made, I just need to put those in architectural language in my motion. Well, okay, we, we, we got to specify what those changes are. Right, okay. so Ginny needs to, to tell me what, what those are so I could put them in my okay. motion. Well, on sheet A20. I got it. Um, for the, to the left of the front elevation, there is yep. something called side. Yep. There's a dimension line at the top yep. that says seven and a half inches. And I'm going to request, I'm going to stipulate that that be nine and a half inches. Okay. And that the uh, eave overhang on the projected hood be increased by, it appears, again, looking at the side uh, illustration, yep. it appears to be, I don't have, uh, even if I had my glasses, I still couldn't read it. It appears to be four and three quarters. I would, uh, I would, I am suggesting that that be six and three quarters on the front, as well as six and three quarters on each side of the roof. Okay, and then the how about, cover. and then how about the, uh, the two, uh, what are they called, pilasters? You pie wanted them, pilasters, you wanted them to be capped yep. or you wanted some? Yes, yes. A, a, a small, simple piece of trim added at the top. And I don't, I don't know, I'm not going to say I think it should be a cove mold or, or uh, what type of shape it should be, but some small trim added at the top of the column. Okay, okay. Jenny, are you are you, you, calling you can all, are you calling hold on a minute are you calling those pilasters or columns? Pilaster, yes. Pilasters or columns? Pilasters. Pilasters. Pilaster. Not right. a column. Right. Okay, got it. They're an engaged projection. Jenny, right. you can always talk to Barrow about that too. You know, uh, that's the, the, define that a little bit better. Okay, well, please. Well, I'm I'm, I'm going to put it in the motion. So. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, and has everybody spoken? Any, any of our other board members need to say anything? Ken or Mark? Nope, I'm good. I just had one question. How wide is the new door? Oh, I don't know. The, the one that's there, there now. It's a 36 inch door, Ken. Okay, thanks. All right, so we have to put that in the minutes because or the motion to 36 inch door. 30, and it's a is solid, that, uh, solid 36, door. 30 oh by solid. six eight. Is it a yes. six foot eight high door? That's not. I'm not sure that's specified either. 36 inch door, solid panel. Yes. No, it's got windows in it. It has windows. The owner. The owner said it was solid panel earlier. Right. 
No, no, we were talking when we talked about solid panel. I yeah. believe as you were talking about the door that was we were we had submitted an A twenty. That so that not the door that's there now. I've, I've not spoken about the door, but 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 for the one side light. Um, I, I don't. Is there glass? I don't know. That I don't know if it has glass in there or not. To be honest with you, I think well, it does. Maybe it does. Do that makes know? a difference. We we need to know that. I don't know either. Yeah. Well, it looks like from the photo. Door, the current door right now. We need to know if it has glass in it. No, no, the one you're proposing. Oh yeah, yeah, the one I'm proposing. I don't think it does have glass. I thought somebody asked about what the door that exists right now is. No, we want I to know what you're proposing. And that's what I thought. Oh, I don't think it has. Doesn't. I'm going by the photo. Oh, excuse me. I'm going by the uh, depiction by bureau. And it doesn't show. It doesn't say window on it. it. Doesn't say glass. I'm assuming it's all wood. No. It, well, it, can I interject real quick? Now I understand why you're getting that kind of a price, Steve. I don't understand. I thought the whole purpose was to take the existing door that you already purchased, center it, and then trim it for the historical relevance. That's, I'm that's, so sorry. That's, exa that's exactly what I asked them to do. I'm sorry. Yes. There should be no reason that it's $6,500 to center that door and trim it. Yeah, if that's right. That, that, you can get some better estimates on that. Yeah, so I mean, wait, now, now, now I'm confused. Are we using the existing door that's already that, there? I always assume yeah. that's what we were doing. That's what he was doing. The, I don't know that Jen's drawing depicts that, but I always assume yeah. that he was taking that door with the glass in it, centering it, and then doing the appropriate trim to make it historically relevant. If that door can be centered like that, absolutely. But I've been led to believe that that wasn't the case because of uh, the size of the door. But I want to use that door with the trim that that I that that bureau did around it, and maybe that's the confusion with the subcontractor. So does that door that's there now? Does the door that's there now look like the one in the drawing? It has the panels just like that. Yes, Lisa. Oh. This is Jenny. Yes, it is. If you look okay. at the if you look at the original application packet, the door on sheet number MD20, MD meaning measured drawing, shows that exact door. Okay, got it. 820 oh. shows glass. It's not right. Steve, it's not called out as glass on that drawing. It shows exactly the same. And, well, if you, Jenny, if you look at the door on 820, it shows an elongated panel on the bottom and then equals right. six, six windows. There's no way they make a solid door with six lights like that above and a solid panel with trim below. That door has glass on it. That I is it doors Steve, doors it doesn't, it, I wasn't it, saying that the glass had door had, that the door had glass in it. I'm saying the door that's shown on measured drawing 20, MD20, appears to be the exact same door that's showing on sheet A20. So if uh, okay. Mr. Sir, Sir Q wants to use the exact same door that's there, that it appears to me that that's what's being shown. It doesn't say new door. It says Correct. existing door. So whatever okay, the door is on that. the house now is the same one he's proposing to put in. Okay, how about if I make a motion and we'll spell that out? I don't think you, you need ready? to. It's, it's as, per, as shown on the, on the uh, application. Sheet Steve, do you agree I with that? You need to call that out. I, I will make. I will put it in there anyways, just to be safe. How is that? Oh my goodness. So if you're ready for if you're ready for a motion, I'd like to make a motion today on October fourteenth, twenty twenty. I make a motion with the, uh, that the HPB approve approve with conditions the application for a door made by Steve Circu at thirty one North Main Street. The additions or the conditions are. On sheet A20, the left front elevation that, st that states seven and a half inches is changed to nine and a half inches. The eave overhang on hood be increased uh, six to six and three 
quarter inches, I'm getting a lot of static from somebody. On the front and side, and then there's a small, simple trim at the top of both pilasters on the front door. We will be using the existing 36-inch solid panel door. Does that sound okay or not? I don't think it's a solid panel. The door that's existing right now is not a solid panel? Well, no, the door doesn't have a glass in it. It has a side light, right? It has no, glass in no, it? No, 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 no. It has glass in it. The existing the door, door right is now. Six, yes, the existing door is a six light glass door. Lisa, just say the existing door. Yeah. Well, are we are we approving the door with glass lights in it? We're approving the existing door be retained. So that, so that has glass lights in it. Does it matter? To the application and the move, mo, motion, it doesn't matter. It's the existing door. Okay, but, people, but we need to know that the existing door has glass in it. So I'll just say existing 36 inch door. Yes. Can I make a can I make a make a or ask a question? I didn't think that doors with glass are architecturally appropriate for this building or for this yeah for this style. I don't I don't know that we said that. What's that? We didn't say that. Okay, but we're we're asking to approve a non-architecturally appropriate door because it is glass in it. We are approving the existing door. Which has glass in it, and it's not non actual uh, It's not non. Uh, it's appropriate, okay? It's it's not appropriate. It is appropriate for the character of a of a uh, that house. Yes. A door with glass panels. Yes. Yes. Okay, I didn't find that in my field guide. I don't have any doors that have. Glass panels on the on the door themselves. It has surround glass, but I don't see anything in my in my field guide. Does anybody? I mean, I if you see that, Lisa, my, my, I, have, my, I have a classic house of that character. The and doors glass have in glass in them. Okay, I didn't see it in my book, but if that's what you said. Lisa, did you look? If you look in your book under the section on Gothic Revival at the photographs, I'm sure you will see houses that have glass. I Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to say the 36-inch existing door. Correct? Everybody good yep. with that? Yep. Okay, so that's my motion made by Lisa Cove. Do I have a second? I second Bill McBride. Bill, okay, can we have roll call, please? Roll call? If Linda's still awake. <laughs> I am Linda. Dorothy. Dorothy? Okay, I'll do it. Uh, no, roll, call, roll call, Bill McBride. Linda. Okay. Bill McBride, Member McBride? Yes. Member Morrow? Yes. Member Searle? Yes. Member Cove? Yes. Member Harrington? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, right. Steve, let me make this comment. You know, if, if, if you decide this is, you've looked at lots of alternatives, uh, for cost, and you you decide that it's going to be way too expensive, you can come back to us with alternatives. So I appreciate that. Well, Lisa, we'll get to all those changes you made that uh, were were proposed. Will I get? Can I get a copy of whatever you just did so I can submit? Sure, I'm yes, 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 I'm going to bring this. That. I'm going to bring this to Linda tomorrow morning, so it will be in the office. Okay. I right, listen. I really appreciate every time. Uh, Thank you, Steve. Thanks, thanks for your patience, you. Steve. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. All right. Lisa, okay, we have we have Lisa, minutes. Yes, I, yes, Jenny. 
I just want to say that I have the older version, but I believe I believe that many of the photographs are the same in the section on revival homes. And on the page that you showed with all those illustrations of pic, yeah. uh, typical doors, there's no indication that those are solid panels or glass. But if you turn the page and you look yes. at the example houses in there, many of them have glass in the front doors. And yes, I do see that now. Several of them are now. double doors. Yeah, so I it's see that now. possible that that building originally had two small doors okay, with yeah. glass. That's not unusual. Then they could open yeah. both doors if they had big, big stuff to bring in. <coughs> what we approved is not out of character with Gothic revival architecture. Absolutely, absolutely not. Great. I have, before we go to minutes, I have a question about 66 South Main Street. Um, a new what? What is that? The, a new stone wall has been built oh, at yes. their property. Yes. And I don't believe it's I don't believe that it's been approved, but I've only been on the board for five months. It's Elisa Plummer's house. Steve, Elisa Plummer? Yes, I, I talked to her about that and I and I checked I, I did a little research and it's it's considered I considered it landscaping and easily reversible. I don't mm. believe that. I don't know. Ahead, we lost Jenny. you, Jimmy. We lost you. Me? Yeah. I'm still here. You can't hear okay, me? Okay, you. you were cutting out. Sorry. If the, um, in the definitions section of the uh, historic preservation, a structure, because we deal with the structures, is anything constructed or erected which requires permanent location on the ground or attachment to something having such location. So it's permanent, it's not, there's no, well, there probably is a foundation, but it's probably just a stone foundation. But it's my opinion that, that it's my opinion, and it's not, I don't make this decision. But it's my opinion that that needs approval. I have, to agree. I have to agree with you, Ginny. That's on dirt. I mean, if you if you guys want me to go after it and ever get approval, that's fine. It's it's my mistake then. But as it as it was just put on dirt with stacked stone and not mortared in place, I figured it was easily reversible if if it was wished or that could be removed. Well, lots of things we approve are reversible. That's one right. of the reasons why we approve them because they are reversible. Jeff, and, and Jeff is, what do you think? And it is, Jeff, and it Jeff, is significant. What do you think? This is significant to public way. I mean, majorly significant. The question Jeff, is whether or not it's per, is, is it a permanent addition? I mean, it's not permanent in the sense that you know windows are windows are permanent. So, right. If if it's permanent in the same sense that windows are permanent, then you know it's a permanent structure. If it's permanent, the same sense as a fence is permanent, which it is. A fence, we have to approve a fence. This is like a stone fence, basically. It's it's an 18-inch high wall it, uh, landscape feature. Yeah, but it's it's significantly, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, you walk by that, by that house, and it's a major architecturally significant it, landscape feature. I mean, if we had to put a, a flagstone patio, on that house and it was you know just out front it would probably have it would have to be approved correct i think i think lisa's i think lisa's fence analogy is right on i think that's what it that's i'm probably where we're at I'm, but again steve that's your call is is it mortared together no not being mortared doesn't make it not permanent right and it's funny that you say that, Ginny, because my husband and I took a walk yesterday and he has nothing, to, he doesn't know anything about historic preservation. And he said, how come that wasn't approved by the board? And I'm like, I don't know, I'll have to ask Steve. <laughs> so it's it's pretty significantly, um, it's right there on the public way. And I think that we really do need to look at that. Maybe we ought to review it, Steve. I, I'm not sure 
we have the jurisdiction you're talking about, but we ought to review it. Well, either we have jurisdiction or we don't, and, and that's going to depend on whether or not it's viewed as a permanent structure. And it seems like it's as permanent as any fence that we've ever dealt with. I think Lisa's yeah. point is good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. All right. Then let's review it. Okay, yeah. We have minutes. Three okay, sets. Okay. We need to we need to approve minutes. Three yeah. sets. I think yeah. It all we got three minutes. three three uh, sets of minutes that we are negligent in approving. Okay. <laughs> So, um, uh, Linda, what do you want us to do? I would like you to approve the June 8th, July 13th, and September 14th, if they look good to you. Do we have okay, to approve I them just... separately? I think you can do it all in one, Jeff said once, right, Jeff? No, you uh, can't. No, I don't know that I, if I said it, I think I was wrong, but I I think they <laughs> ought to just do it, just do it separately. Someone told me that, but go ahead, one at a time. Okay, so I, I'm making a motion. I just reviewed the last one, and, and, that's, and that's fine with me. All right, so why don't we start at June 8th? Because I'm going to make yeah. a motion to approve the minutes from Monday, June 8th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. I approve. I, I, I approve. I have no issues. Okay. Anybody not approve? How about that? I approve. And, okay, and Mark, you're okay? Do we lose yes. Mark? Okay, Mark's okay. Mark? Okay. Mark. No, no, no. Sorry, I'm here. Uh, no, you, uh, you, you got me. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm okay. So you approve the minutes for June eighth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes for Monday, July thirteenth, twenty twenty. Do I have a second? A second. Yes. So we're right. Okay, McBride. Okay. Right. McBride? Yes. Cove? I approve. Yes. Thurl? Yes. Morrow? Yes. Harrington? Yes. Thank you. It's and then approved. I make, a motion, I make a motion to approve Monday, September 14, 2020. Do I have a second? I second Bill McBride. Okay, McBride? Yes. Cove? Yes. Thurl? Yes. Morrow. Yep. Harrington. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, Linda, I will bring these uh, th these minutes over to you tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Hey, but okay. before before everybody before everybody walks out, I have a question. I didn't want to raise it though during the uh, uh, during the meeting. Um, I've been uh, talking to the new landlord at uh, at my place, and uh, used to be Charlie Fox's, and now it's this other guy. I can't remember what his name is, and uh, about maybe doing some things, and I'll just write the check for him because I'm tired of it looking like this. Uh, in the process, uh, I looked at the house that's right next to me, uh, one house over from 58 State, and it, it looks the the lighting out there. I don't know what we can do about this, if anything. But my God, I mean, these are these are like floodlights, you know, all over the front of the house. And I just think it's uh, I don't know. I, I I don't think it's in keeping with the neighborhood. I mean, it's, it's I, fine I if you were walking. I into think that's a, a zoning board or... issue. It's that, a zoning. I think okay. that's zoning board issue. All right. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll raise it with them then. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. you talked to, you talk to actually, Steve. Actually, it's an issue for me. It's Steve's issue. Oh. Yeah, okay, Steve, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Hey Jeff, you still there? Jeff? I'm here. Uh, I need to talk to you about uh seventy five Monroe. Uh can we talk later tonight? Separately? Yeah, just give me your uh give me, give me your give me your number again, Bill. I don't have it with me. Right, it's it's five eight six six nine five eight. Okay. And before you guys sign off, and I think Linda did, you need to do a motion to close your meeting. Okay, I I make uh, I make a motion to close this meeting uh, of the HPB. Do I have a second? I'll second. 
How do we vote? Aye. Roll call. Oh, yes. Roll call. Let's do a roll call. Vote. Yes. McBride, Member McBride. Yes. Yes. Member Morrow. Yes. Member Harrington. Member Harrington. Mark. Yes, I apologize. Member Cole. Yes. Member Searle. Yes. Meeting is closed. Okay. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. Good night. Okay, have a good night. Tough issues, but okay. I think we handle them pretty well. Yeah, great, okay. great meeting. Thank you. I'll call you in about five minutes, Bill. I'll call you right Thanks. now. Okay, Thanks. great. Thank Jeff. you, Steve. Thank you very okay. much.